Hi there, I'm Randy Gilbert. Welcome to this edition of Capital Update. With me today, we have Representative Connie Depke mm -hmm. and Senator Jen Olson. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. It's good to be here. Wonderful well, to be here. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm happy that you're both here with us today. Great. Hey, I figured we'd th start the show off today talking quickly about redistricting. Mm -hmm. We've been hearing a little bit about this in the news, and I know that the date is coming up on February 21st. Mm -hmm. And I thought, who better than Senator Olson, who's been through this <laughs> three times sure. now, to, to give us a little synopsis scenario of what's going to be happening here. Mm -hmm. Well, as you, <clears throat> as you know, the, the uh, redistricting occurs every 10 years after a cens cens census because every person has to uh, have a equal power to their vote. And um, the February 21st date is the deadline for the courts who now have the redistricting plan that was uh, sub submitted both by the Republicans and the Democrats. Uh, the governor vetoed uh, the, the plan that was sent to him, and so they are making the decision. The one exception would be, and it hasn't, I don't know that it's happened before, would be if the legislature got busy and tr developed a bipartisan plan that the governor would sign, that would become the plan. But that usually doesn't happen and the courts make that decision. So they will, they will uh, send down that decision and, and the, um, for the, how the districts will be shaped come January 1st, 2013. So the terms will be running out, running for, of existing legislators are through the end of the year. And um, the election, of course, will occur in November and people will make their choices as to who is going to be uh, their, uh, who they want to be their, their uh, legislator representative or senator beginning in the next biennium in 2013. Okay. I do think it's important to, because I don't think we touched this, the redistricting occurs, as you said, after the census, so that every district is represented fairly, mm -hmm. population-wise, mm -hmm. given credence to geographical boundaries and, and such, which is always the issue in mm -hmm. why it goes to court. Yes. Um, you did mention one thing, is there's this possibility exists that the Republicans are going to try to put together a bipartisan plan and get to the governor in the next mm -hmm. three weeks? I, I'm not sure if there is such a plan to do that. It is, it is still a possibility. There is time to do it if they chose to do it. And uh, I don't know if there's the will to do it or if they, you know, nobody was happy with either plan. Uh, you know, if Democrats didn't like the Democrat plan and a lot of the Republicans don't like the Republican plan, but, right. but somehow the, we, it generally has been left to that court panel to make that recommendation, and uh, that becomes uh, the the uh, the, the, way, the uh, new borders for districts. Okay, and, and both congressional and 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 state legislature. Okay, and this is what's been happening the, the times before, the two times before the yes. courts have had to step in and mm -hmm. clean up the mess, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, ladies, there's a lot in the news going on right yes. now with uh, up in St. Paul. And one of the things that we are starting to hear right now is that on January 24th, mm -hmm. you guys convene the second year of the session. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of talk about what's going to be happening here. And I think it would be great to actually start off a little bit about we have two sessions. We went to the first session last year and we did the budget. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to get together in this session. And why did we get together on this session? And let's talk a little bit about that. Representative, you want to start? I'd love to. Um, it, it's important, I think, for people to know, Randy, too, that this session is currently planned for 10 weeks. Last year, we were in session, and a normal session would be uh, 15 weeks. The second year of the biennium is traditionally reserved for bonding. Last year, we did put forward uh, close to a half a billion dollars in, in bonding money. Uh, so that this year, although it's traditionally a bonding year and there is going to be work on a bonding bill, um, that, and the governor has already come out and he has given his bonding bill, but I think we need to vet it. The, certainly the House and the Senate will have their, um, their version of the bonding bill as well, but uh, the governor did his work. He got us the bill in time so that we can look at it, vet it, but that isn't going to be all of the, what's going on this session, and it's going to be a real, it's going to be quick, and it's going to be furious, and uh, there's a, a lot to do, and it, I think we're ready for it, and it's going to be an interesting session as well. Well, as, as always, there's unfinished business from the first year, and mm -hmm. frankly, over time, uh, it's, uh, 
everybody is scrambling and bills keep getting introduced and and it's almost like it is behaving like a a, a, a budget session or a first year session. Mm -hmm. um, that might not be quite as much the case this year because of it being uh, the election year with redistricting. And, and hopefully, I think people will be, I won't be one of those that's, that's running, but, but they will, uh, they want to get home and be ready to organize and, and run for election. So hopefully we will be able to get closure on the issues. But we, there, there definitely are some unfinished reforms that we had hearings or there was maybe something that with a little bit more work could pass the governor's uh, muster for, mm -hmm. for his being willing to sign it. He has taken stands for government reform, as have we. And so I think that show, holds, holds some promise that, that we can get some more work done. We certainly feel that way in education. Mm -hmm. We got some significant things accomplished, but there's more to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we can get it done this year, so much the better. Mm -hmm. So I am curious, and I don't want to go deep into any of these conversations, but you know, we've been hearing that the state has now had a, a projected surplus from what we had. Mm -hmm. You know, there's the talk of the Viking Stadium. With the talk, the, the stadium debate's going to go on forever, so I don't mm -hmm. even want to get into talking about that right now. But the surplus, how is that going to affect this session and what we do this session? Let me react to, to that. Mm -hmm. the, actually, we wouldn't have to do anything this session because the, the state law tells us what to do with the surplus. Okay. At first, mm -hmm. fill the cash flow account. Second, the budget reserve. And third, paying back any shift that might be there for the schools and their aid payments. And uh, the amount that has been predicted is enough to fill the cash flow account and the budget reserve. I'm not sure if they could make a small start on the, on the, um, uh, the, the payment shift, shift or not. But we could adjourn and that the law, current law would take care of it. Well, and so that isn't, but that isn't going to happen, however. But it should. It's, I, yes, I think well, that's it's so it's, simple. It's, it's, that's what the, the reality is, I think there will be an effort to protect. And, and the, the, the other reality is we won't know. Th these aren't the numbers that we make our final decision on. Right. It will be the February forecast, which we will receive in the first few days in March. Mm -hmm. And so then we will know what we have to the, the numbers that we have to meet in order to end the, the session with a balanced budget, mm -hmm. predicted balanced budget for the next biennium. Yeah. I, I do find, if I made, I find that amazing because I, I feel a little out of the loop that I wasn't aware that there was these prescribed yes. Uh, yes. actions yes. that we were supposed to do. And, and we're already hearing people wanting to spend this money on different things. Yes. One of them was the Viking Stadium. And everyone complained about the shift that you as Republicans mm -hmm. put through the first time and yet I'm not hearing the DFL right now saying, let's let this happen so the shift can be you know, taken back as fast. Because that's what would happen. The shift would be lessened if this well, happened. Uh, but see, the reality with the shift is this year they're already back at 100% of their aid. They made an adjustment, a one-time adjustment for us to help us get through this. Okay. And adding that money is not like new money for them to spend on you know, the general operations. So I, I, many of the thoughtful superintendents would rather we go slow on sending that back so that they could use it on one-time kinds of investments because they've already made that adjustment. For some districts, it would mean that they could pay off if they have had to borrow and get rid of that. Um, but but to, uh, to try to get either the whole lump sum or large amounts is actually going to make uh, make life more difficult mm -hmm. out in the schools than it is if, if it's if it comes back in a in a uh, in a more orderly fashion. For for those who didn't borrow, is what you're saying. Because yes. if you borrowed, yeah. I would think they would want the money back right yes. away. And pay yeah. Off well, the that's not. And... They wouldn't. But they don't have to borrow for all of it. I mean, they've, okay. they've, there's the, the cash flow. See, it affects their cash flow, and so that's what they have to borrow to cover, uh, and and that that's a, a, a varying. Uh, a varying cost. Okay, mm -hmm. so then really the session should be about bonding. Well, it's going to well, yeah. Go it's ahead. going to be about bonding, but there's there are, as Jen said, and 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 we will get uh, to this uh, this subject. There there are things that were left over from last year that we are really going to continue some of the reforms. And one of the th reasons that we had a better cash flow is that some of the reforms and and the governor said this in his announcement 
that of the uh, uh, $800 uh, million dollars plus, uh, about 50% of it were, were the reforms that we made in health and human services and some of the other areas. Um, and so those reforms and the government reforms that we made last year are already being able to show the fruits of that, of that labor. Okay. Yeah, but we're, as Jen also said, that we will really budget uh, on the February forecast, and this is a projection, and we um, had projections last year too, and so we're watching it very carefully. Sure. We we don't we are not flush with cash. It's almost a billion dollars, but it, that but it's really cash flow okay. is what uh, as Jen explained. Okay, so you know what? let's let's take a break right now, and we come back. We've, you've both mentioned about reform that's going to happen mm -hmm. this session. Let's talk a little bit more about the reform. Mm -hmm. Maybe talk a little bit about the bonding bill that the governor has. Um, mm -hmm presented and things that we need to be aware of mm -hmm. with, with bonding bills. Mm -hmm. And we can talk about some other things that you guys Good. would want to get done in the session. Good. So come right back with us and we'll talk more about what's going on at the Capitol. We interrupt this program to bring you this important message. The Lake Minnetonka Communications Commission, located in Spring Park, Minnesota, offers free television production classes. You heard it right. Free, free, free. free. Our friendly and knowledgeable staff will help bring your idea to the big screen. Why, thank you. We are very friendly and knowledgeable. From studio lighting and nonlinear editing to on-location shooting, we'll guide you down the path you need to succeed. Hurry in, folks. An opportunity this good won't last forever. Welcome back. For the second session, I thought we'd start off talking about the bonding bill. Um, it, but I, I have a question for, for both of you. When you finished up the first session, part of that compromise, if you will, to, to get out of the holdout that we had was a $500 million bonding bill, which my understanding is that's not normally the time that we have a bonding bill. And now the governor has put forth another 700, or, yeah, $775 million bonding bill. From the outside, this seems really irresponsible that we would be borrowing $1.2 billion. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one of you wants to start with this. But. Well, the, the governor sees this as a, con, a contribution to adding jobs. And it, it's true. The, the, uh, the contracts that are let for this, for private sector jobs, particularly in the construction industry, which is hurting, um, it is an opportunity there. Unfortunately, it's sometimes we, don't all, we, we fund projects and they're not ready to go. So goodness only knows when that, in fact, will happen. Uh, we've had traditionally had a, uh, a practice of limiting the amount of bonded indebtedness as a percentage of the general fund that we uh, uh, enter into. And uh, I think we've passed that. With, and it, when you start doing significant size bonding bills each year of the biennium, it's really easy to slip into that kind of mode. So I think there's a lot of questions that have to be uh, discussed and considered as to uh, what's happened with what we did in the last, with the 500 million. How far has that gone? Is it, is it being used? What, are, what um, is the wisdom of the, of the current pro uh, governor's proposals and, and how much is that going to cost? Um, and when could they be effectively be started? as well as uh, the House and Senate have ideas. You know, it's an election year, and it's for many. That hasn't been the case. I've had, in 30 years, I've had one project, and that was getting a little $2 million for helping to buy the Big Island Veterans Camp, which was money that went to veterans. And um, so it's, um, uh, but some, for some, that's a big deal for what's in their district. And going into an election year, there's, a, there's the, the temptation and the push for some of those projects that have, have uh, benefit a, a given area as well. So I, I do have a question because I think about back in mm -hmm. the days as being mayor. You know, we bonded as well for yeah. certain mm -hmm. things, yeah. but we had a schedule and we we didn't want to keep bonding because that adds obligation every year to, to debt service and your levy and, and it creates more hardship even though you're spreading it out over 30 years. You know, this was 500 million last session, potentially 775 mm -hmm. if the governor gets his way this time. The session before there would have been a bonding bill. There must exist a spreadsheet that we look out there, and this number is actually into the billions of how many outstanding bonds that oh, we have, yes. and our obligation I, I, must be growing. Yeah, that's I, public information. Yeah, right. I, it I, is. I don't have it in the tip of my tongue, or maybe even my head, but uh, but it's there. But do we? Is there consideration given? I mean, you talked about there's you know only so much 
per session that you want to do or per you know two year mm -hmm. two year um, cycle, but we look at that. We, yeah. we look hard at that and say you know we are we're getting out of control here because we can keep mm -hmm. borrowing and even though everyone likes to say rates are cheap, it's the right time to borrow. We still have to pay it back. Well, th sure. That is a very, you know, it's a very good point. And um, my concern is, as a, I've been in the legislature now three years, and every year that I've been in the legislature, we've had some kind of a bonding uh, bill. And I want, I think the public needs to know that uh, two things. Yes, bonding can produce jobs. Many of them are temporary jobs. And at the end of last session when we were, uh, bonding for another 500 million, we still had uh, several million dollars, uh, several hundreds of million dollars left over from the year before that still hadn't been put. So when we talk about shovel ready to get immediate jobs, sometimes that doesn't happen for a year, maybe two years. And we're at a level in the state now where our debt service, because bonding is really just another word for borrowing. Yes. And if you take it down to the level of a family and your family budget, if you're borrowing money to do something, uh, you, you have to carefully make sure that you can pay off that interest. And the interest now, uh, the pie that comes out of the general fund of, for interest uh, payments and, and paying back the interest on that is growing and growing and it's becoming much greater than it has been in the last few years. And so I think that yes, it will create jobs, but what we really need to be doing is concentrating on government reform that's going to give us long-term solutions. Bonding, uh, if we bond for the right projects, whether it's infrastructure, roads and bridges and things like that that, you, that you'll hear a lot of us talking about, that's one thing. But if you're bonding for a, a, just a temporary fix to something, we shouldn't do that. And we really need, when we bond for transportation, we have to think about the long range ongoing support and costs on those projects and so that is that's critical and what you're you mentioned is very good I, I agree with you and I, I'm certainly not looking to simplify this but I think about families and we've all heard these stories that refinance their home and pull out ten thousand dollars so they can go to Mexico yes. and that's what I'm thinking of what you're yes. saying is that sometimes we're bonding for something that should have been part of your budget. Yes. Well, it's it's and and it's it's a normal way for cities and governments to work. It's I'm not trashing the idea, but it has to be done thoughtfully and it has to be done for the outgoing costs that you that you experience just like any family yeah. does. And we've been trying to exercise more discipline to uh, at least regional significance, yes. not just local projects that are the election tools. Yes. That's exactly. Uh, it's, it's it. either state uh, you know, state definitely state uh, facilities and infrastructure, or um, regional at the at the minimum. Yeah, and so. I agree with that. I mean, that's what that's why we elect you. You mm -hmm. know, we elect local officials, i.e., mayors and council members in, in um, Hennepin County and other county commissioners, to take care of things on to the local level. I look to the governor, our house, and our senate to do the things mm -hmm. that benefit the state in, in the and long run. To, and that's the, to the governor's credit, he, he's out there early and he's saying this is what I think is important and this is what I expect. And so it, it really has given us a chance to really look at it and and uh, I congratulate him for doing that early. And then it's, it's mm -hmm. interesting that our new Senate Majority Leader is also the chair of the bonding or the yes. Capital Investment Committee. Yeah. So it puts him in a strong position in terms of negotiating mm -hmm. with the governor as well. Yeah. And he's got, he has a, a nice style that will, be, I think, work to a good end. Okay. Yes. Yes. Well, and we've certainly seen in the news recently with the governor releasing this and, and the reactions from the Republican side. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we talked about something in the first session and we've kind of flirted with it a little bit here that Part of this session, as well as its binding, is about reforming the way we do business mm -hmm. in St. Paul. And uh, you both have talked about this in previous shows, and Jen, I don't know if you would like to start with mm -hmm. this, about some of the things, the Senate things, that they want to be taking a look at and, and starting to reform even more, because the reform started last session. Mm -hmm. I know there will be continued work in the health care area, and I think it's surprised that some of the things that we've benefited from in our economy have been the, the, the proposals that we're working. And uh, there are others that were par partially initiated, we haven't seen the results of it yet, and others that didn't get put in place. And I think there's more openness as people have had a chance to think about what, what kind of tools we can use 
to work toward and achieve that reform in the way we do business that uh, we're going to see coming forward. In education, we started uh, we started down the path of the reform, some of the reforms, and a lot of it had to do with like, some of the key ones that I hope we can finish are the the evaluation, the performance evaluation, both at the teaching level and the administrative level, the principals that that are aimed toward assuring that we have the uh, the right people in the right place. Um, and, and committed to the student achievement, that the students come first, not the adults. And um, that, that has a potential for some great, great significance. Teachers are important and many are doing outstanding jobs, but um, they should be recognized for that. And sometimes they may not, uh, it may not link with seniority. I know there's a great deal of interest in not <coughs> having um, uh, the seniority alone protected so that when when reductions have to be made it's your your uh, your lo lower cost teachers therefore you eliminate more of them mm -hmm. and drive up class sizes and so on and you may be laying off a real gem um, and, and that's that's needed and so we don't want to see uh, the school administrators hands tied like this and we're hearing that that makes sense keep the ones that have the the qualities and the, the, the success uh, with the kids. And, and uh, so there, there are some key reforms in, the, in that area that we want to work on. You yeah. say that, that that makes sense, but I'm certain Education Minnesota doesn't think that makes sense at all with no. the, the... Well, that's, that's, well, that's right. their there is job. Resistance. You yeah. know, their, their job is to continue to provide, provide jobs for their teachers. Right. But, what but we're, a lot of the young yeah. people that are being attracted to education would like this right. because they don't want to sit around forever if they're doing it to, to have a, a decent wage. And we, we, have, we have our system skewed to loading even the, 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 the percent increases go to the upper end and the greater seniority. And uh, that, is, that is, um, uh, it, it is essentially creating a, a system that is unsustainable. Yes. Uh, that the automatic, the, the raises that are on automatic pilot uh, are can range from anywhere from 10 to 15 to 20 percent increased cost for that biennium for the school district. Well, it's no wonder that they say, "Oh, we've got to cut." Well, it's not. They're 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 having to cut because they have these automatic base increases, and there's no way that the state is going to come up with that kind of funding. Sure. And so it's always going to be that struggle. And I'm tired of it. I didn't think everybody would be. I think the public is, and I'm yeah. not sure they quite understand it. And they value their schools, but we have got to get a system that is much is more sustainable and and let the let their teachers do the excellent job and be recognized for it. And I want to I, I, yeah. sorry for interrupting. No, I do want no. to make one point that I think you know, as Republicans in, the, in St. Paul that we need to make a point of is that a lot of times education gets spoken and the, the press and other people will say that we're trying to cut that. And, and I say that's the furthest thing from the truth. Education represents the largest portion of our budget, bar none. Mm -hmm. And we all believe in education, but we want it to be run more efficient is what I'm hearing you say. Yes. We're not looking for us to, to cut more teachers. We want them to get paid what we believe they should be paid. But we need to make certain that when the cuts are occurring, that we're cutting the right people out of the system to make sure that the, the education is as high of a quality as we possibly can give to our children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and no, no one, I mean, last year the budget gave uh, the education the highest percent increase of all the areas. And, uh, and our schools are very grateful for that. They're extremely grateful. But the, the buzzword that I like to say is that we need to change education to uh, support the children, put the kids first and not the adults right. in the system. And that's really what it's all about. And, and that's where the, the, um, you know, the rubber hits the road with, uh, with the teachers union. You know? sure. so, but we're not here to, dra to bash no, the no, teachers but, but union. But it is something that's going to get attention. It is. And what I, and because they're doing their job in protecting their teachers. But on the other hand, w our job is to protect our you know, the people of our state and to make sure that we are educating our students, the best thing we can do is to educate students for the future that they're going to have because we need, we don't need more people going on welfare or public assistance. We want, obviously those are safety nets, sure. but we want to provide an educated workforce. Our businesses are crying for that. Our 
our unemployment in Minnesota is lower than the national right. average. We've got lots of jobs out there, but we do not have the educated workforce right now because only 45% of our kids graduate from the high school in the state. And so we've got so many children that are, are out there looking for jobs, can't find them, and we've got businesses with jobs and can't find people to fill them. That, that, that's, uh, I'm glad uh, Connie's made that point very well. Um, the, the, closing the achievement gap between uh, groups of students that we've classified and, and have essentially set low expectations for when they really, in fact, can, in, can learn. Uh, what, another thing that we have done is that we have placed all of our emphasis on the academics and not on the applied use of them, such as our career and tech programs, mm -hmm. particularly at the high school level. It's contributed to the increased dropout rate. And there are ways, there are things that we're going to be working on to try to get that attention because many of those jobs that are sitting out there are because nobody's attracted to that at the, at the, at the college level because they don't even understand them. Sure. And that has been eradicated from the high school mm -hmm. curriculum. And so we have to find ways to assure that young people know and respect and that the public respects. Um, you know, there was, a, I think it was John Gardner that said years ago, if, if you elevate uh, philosophy and, and, you know, downgrade, I'm using the paraphrasing, um, uh, plumbing, then both your ideas and your pipes will not hold water. Sure. <laughs> and so there's, there's value in knowing how to do things and how to use the applied. Uh, kids, kids that are in some of these programs do better on their math and their, and their reading development because they're working in an area that's of interest and they see how it's used. Sure. So there's, those are a couple areas that I want to also at least push. I may not get as far as I want, but uh, that we, we start to recognize because those are part and parcel of our job situation. Absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. we're running out of time, yes, Representative, I and I know okay. that we've spoke a lot about Reform 2.0, yes. and I think we'll just have to wait and see what starts happening. What I would like to have, Senator and Representative, is try to get you guys back in mid-session or, you know, late session and talk about what's happening so that we can get an update and then we'll, we'll meet again after. I, I hope we you'll join it. us in, in, mm -hmm. you know, before the 10 weeks Great. is over. Yeah. Thank so, you for inviting thank us. You. Oh, mm -hmm. Thank you both for being here. So remember, if you want to know what your legislators are doing in St. Paul, you need to be tuning in to the Capitol Update. See you next time. Previously on America's favorite daytime drama, Lake Minnetonka, Brick has a secret. Bunny? Yes, Brick? I have a secret. What is it? I, I, I. We interrupt this program to bring you this important message. The Lake Minnetonka Communications Commission, located in Spring Park, Minnesota, offers free television production classes. You heard it right, free, free, free. 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 All you need to do is sign up and show up to receive your special TV training. That's right, folks, that's, that's it. it. Wow, that sure looks easy. Our friendly and knowledgeable staff will help bring your idea to the big screen. Well, that is if you have a big screen. Why, thank you. We are very friendly and knowledgeable. You'll learn the secrets of how a television studio works. If you can't see video, try taking off the lens cap. Wow! Thanks, LMCC. From studio lighting and nonlinear editing to on-location shooting, we'll guide you down the path you need to succeed. Just call us at 952-471-7125 or go to our website at www.lmcc-tv.org to get started today. Hurry in, folks. An opportunity this good won't last forever. We now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. So, you're not mad? Of course not, you big lug. I just wish that you would have told me about LMCC's production classes. Maybe next time we can take classes. Together?